Hello everyone, and welcome back to another cartography lecture video. And in this lecture video, I want to continue our discussion on the approaches that we can use to generalize vector data. So in the previous video, we talked about simplification and smoothing, which dealt with that idea of complexity or complication with that idea of reducing detail. And we talked about aggregation and amalgamation, which helped address that idea of coalescence and congestion. What I want to do in this video is cover the remaining six methods that we're going to talk about. And so the first method I want to talk about in this video is this idea of collapse. Right, and what I want you to imagine is we have, let's say, we made a, we're zoomed in at the county level, so we're talking geographic concept of scale here. Right, we're at the county level, and we have some school district, or we have the outline, or even better, we have the outline of a school. Right. We then decide that we want to take that data and we want to zoom out to the state level. And so when we zoom out to the state level, what we end up with is something that looks like that. Right? And from a map perspective, right, this isn't particularly meaningful. Right? You've lost the ability to meaningfully discern any of the geometry here. And going back to that idea of complexity and complication, right, this is just going to look like noise. So what collapse does instead is it replaces this idea of a polygon with a single point that we can then use some sort of stylized icon to represent. So instead of having, you know, we have the school here, right, instead we can collapse that down to a single point, which we can then use an icon at the centroid. So collapse it converts polygons to points and uses icons, typically uses icons to convey meaning. Typically, you don't always have to use icons, but typically you're going to convert a polygon to a point, and they're going to use an icon to convey the meaning. So you're going to go from the boundary of the school down to a single point that represents the school. Right, the next approach is going to be what's called merging. And so you could imagine, say for example, you had an interchange, right? a freeway interchange, and you have all kinds of roads. Right? So you have all kinds of roads doing all kinds of stuff coming into an interchange. Right? And you can imagine that as you zoom out, right, these lines are going to come on top of each other. You're going to have that coalescence issue. What merging does Right. Merging is going to group repetitive and unnecessary features together. Right. You could imagine if you had a stream with a lot of tributaries flowing down into it, right? Those could be replaced by a single stream, for example. So merging, again, it groups unnecessary features together to reduce that clutter or that congestion. Another way of approaching that same issue would be this idea of refinement. All right, so let's go ahead and let's imagine a world where we have the ma a major river. I'm going to try and make this thick. 
right, we have a major river. And then flowing into that river, we have a primary tributary flowing into it. And then off of that primary tributary, we have a secondary tributary flowing into it. And then off of that secondary tributary, we have a tertiary tributary, and so on and so forth. And you can imagine this becoming a convoluted spider web mess. When you zoom out and you start to lose that distance between the individual features, again, that idea of coalescence and congestion. So what refinement does is refinement says, okay, rather than merging features together, refinement's going to say, just simply remove remove less important features. Right, to use this, this tributary example, right, we might decide that rather than having to go all the way out to quaternary, quaternary tributaries, right, we might cut those off and instead just have the main, primary, and secondary. Right, so we lose these tertiary and longer sort of tributaries in the river. And you can see how already this has made a huge difference in the overall complexity. And you can see that as we zoomed out, I changed the line width um, artistically. But you can see our refinement, right, instead of merging things together, we simply removed the ones that were less important. Eight is called exaggeration. Right, exaggeration. I think exaggeration requires a little bit of explaining. So the way I like to think of exaggeration is that bay example that we've been talking about. So let's say we have some land feature coming in and it goes like this, and it cuts out and there's a bay, right? And then it cuts back in and you have this tiny little opening or inlet, right? Where the water can come through. And if you zoom out, right, as with many things we've talked about before, right, the bay is going to get smaller. And you'll see here, right, we've lost that inlet, right, that this inlet here is gone in this image. And if you think about the map that you're making, right, maybe this inlet is extremely important to the, to the story that you're trying to tell, right, to the message that you're trying to convey with your map, right, this inlet might be really important. So what exaggeration is, is exaggeration basically alters the geometry and the geography to highlight critical features. So if rather than having it be like that, what you're going to do is you're going to end up with the same situation, right? the same approximate size bay, but you're actually going to make sure that you artificially increase this. Right? This is artificial. Let me make a note here. Right? This is artificial. Right? I've gone in and I've altered the data specifically to highlight the fact that this exists relative to the original and what would have been had we left the data alone as we changed scale. So exaggeration, is it's kind of, in a way, it's lying in terms of dealing with measurements, right? You, if you measured this, you would be wrong. But it's a way of stylistically exaggerating something that is important for the story you're telling.
in a similar vein to exaggeration, right, we can have this thing called enhancement. So enhancement, right, sim it does very similar thing to exaggeration, but instead of altering the data to make something seem bigger than it is, we actually use some sort of alternative method to exaggerate the impact of an object. So a good example of this would be if we had two roads crossing each other, right? And you may want to know, or a common question might be, at this point of intersection, right, which one's on top? Right. Or is one on top? Is it a four-way intersection with a stop light and stop sign? Or is one of them an overpass and an underpass? Right. That's a pretty important question. And maybe for the story you're trying to tell with your map, you might really want to make that fact abund abundantly clear. So what you might do in this case is you might employ some sort of artistic rendering where you would have one break right, like that. So by including this sort of artistic rendering here, you've made it explicitly clear that this road is going on top and that this road is going under and that this is not a four-way stop intersection. Right, so enhancements use artistic renderings. to convey meaning to convey meaning not shown in the raw data because right, again, if you were to just map two roads, you would have no way of showing which one's on top. You have to go in and you have to add these sort of artistic renderings to make that clear. The final approach that you can take is this idea of displacement. Right. And displacement is similar to that idea of exaggeration. But what I want you to think about is I want you to think about a road that runs along a river. So I'm going to do the road in, in... I'll do the road in white. All right, so we have this road. Right, this is a road. And this road is running alongside... A river. And you can imagine, right, as all things do, when we change the scale, right, we're going to end up with that issue of congestion where the road is going to be doing this and the river is going to be doing this. Right, we've lost that gap in between them. But let's just say for the sake of argument that these are both important features that we want to include and we want to highlight. What we can do is we can do what's called displacement where we actually move, right? We physically move the geometry of one object. Relative to another. Right, so what that would look like would be even though we've drastically reduced the scale, right, there are much shorter line segments, we've altered them so that we retain some of that separation so that we can clearly distinguish between the two. And what makes this different from exaggeration is that exaggeration is, the, is a critical feature of a single, of a single object. Right, in this case, we've altered the shoreline to make this inlet be visible. 
whereas displacement, we're dealing with the relationship between two objects, between two different features. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So displacement, exaggeration, and enhancement are all kind of related in that we're doing things to the data that aren't necessarily accurate, but they're being done explicitly to tell and enhance the story that we're trying to tell. Right, in this case with exaggeration, we really want you to know that this particular feature is here. With enhancement, we're trying to make sure that we're able to convey meaning that might not be readily apparent in the actual data. And with displacement, we're making sure that if we have multiple features that we're literally just gonna move them apart so that we can keep those features distinct. Hopefully this all makes sense. And if you have any questions, as always, please reach out. Thank you.